I need a place I can elevate my soul Where my mind and spirit can be whole Where the truth is real and greatness is a norm Thank you for joining us on today's broadcast. It's such a joy to have you. Uh, Happy New Year, I must say. This broadcast uh, promises to be a blessing to you all through this year. And as I start this new series uh, from our Enterprise Development Month, uh, we are contributing our part in getting you ready for what God wants to do in your life in 2013. God wants to birth something new in your life. He wants to start something great in your life. And we want to prep you up uh, to, to you know, come up uh, with those things that God wants to do in your life. Our Enterprise Development Month, uh, we, we taught a series on how to start something new. And I'm going to be sharing that with you in this season. And as a church, uh, we're saying that we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you for being a part of our church from your homes, from your offices, and we trust God that this new season will bring something new into your life. And from the congregation of the Elevation Church, we are all saying, Happy New Year. Let's put our hands together for our guests, for all of our viewers on TV. Praise God. God bless you and enjoy today's broadcast. God bless you. Now let's talk about how to generate business idea. First, I talk about needs. Needs. There are basic needs out there. In fact, looking at yourself, or we looking at ourselves, we are just born. There are a lot of needs from the hair. You need to cut your hair. In fact, if it is a woman, then uh, wonderful business ideas. From um, Nigeria hair to makeup to nails, there are business ideas. So human needs, what are our basic needs? Talking about food, talking about shelter, talking about safety, you know, women, children, we all have all kinds of ideas. The other one is problem solving. When you are able to discover or connect to a particular problem. Yesterday, I was on the road for my office and it was like closing hours and I saw a lot of people at different bus stops. I was wondering what was happening. So the person sitting beside me just quickly said, you know that they've banned Okada, you know, in the, and this is, the, this is a very um, prominent means of transportation within Lagos. So that's a problem already. How do you solve it? What business idea that can we discover? or can, can we bring up from that um, scenario of seeing people parked in bus stops, there's no means of them moving around. I'm starting out a new series of messages today and I, while preparing for this, God spoke to my heart about someone in this place. I'm going to read a scripture and I believe that uh, God wants you to, you know, pray with this scripture, you know, confess it, declare it over your life and over your business, over your family. And there's definitely going to be a turnaround in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I had uh, an insight into what happened, you know, with, with, with the Israelites in the desert. The desert is a place where nothing can grow. And while they were in the desert, God sustained them by supplying manna. Manna is what you can just gather for the day and you get a supply for the day and they were seemingly living from hand to mouth when you are in a wilderness experience nothing around you can grow 
And I sense in my spirit that God wants to bring someone into a new season. That he will terminate the wilderness experience. He will take you beyond financial manner. Because for someone, it's like you just have enough for the day. God instructed them about the manner. Don't even keep anything for the next day because it's going to spoil overnight. Just gather enough for the day and there will be manna every day. And when Israel got to the border of the promised land, manna ceased because they stepped into a new land where they could plant and harvest. And for somebody here, God is bringing you into a season where you will be able to plant and harvest. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I read for the sake of that one person, Isaiah 32, I read from verse 15 to 18. Talking about what happens, like what will happen in this season when the Spirit of God is released over your life. Isaiah 32 from verse 15 to 18. It says, until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. It says, and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruit, fruitful field. And the work of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Verse 18 says, my people will dwell in a peaceful habitation in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places say believe in amen somebody amen. i see someone here god is going to move you from the desert into a fruitful field amen. someone is already in a fruitful field i need you to release your faith in this season to move beyond the fruitful field into a forest because there's a difference between the fruitful field and the forest. A fruitful field is still yet a field, yet it has plants that can bring forth fruit. But when you step into a forest, you see trees. Trees bring forth fruit perpetually according to seasons. And they are transgenerational. Someone here, God is launching you into transgenerational blessings. Amen. One seed that will grow, one company, one initiative that you pass to your children, your children's children, you know, and you know, to the fourth generation, fifth generation, the tree will keep bringing forth fruit. Amen. That will be your testimony. Amen. My encouragement is that you open your eyes and mind, and this season, focus on God. God does not have any problem with releasing seeds. It's our capacity to receive seed and to incubate the seed that may be questionable. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. So what you need to take you to your destiny is already supplied. But it's just for you to be able to lay hold on it and much more than that, to be able to incubate it to bring forth a hundredfold. Join me in your Bibles today in 2 Kings chapter 4. I read from verse 1 to 7 as I teach on what I've titled Becoming a Money Magnet. Becoming a Money Magnet. This Enterprise Development Month uh, will bring us to a realization, especially if your mind has not been working on that before, of the fact that all the provision, all that you need to attain to financial freedom to leave the wilderness, to step into a fruitful field where God can make you a blessing has been supplied. But we need to position ourselves to be able to receive. And as God will move our hearts to back new things, to start enterprises, some people here will start you know, new businesses, some people here is just a, a social enterprise that God wants you to start something that will be a blessing to other people. You know people run NGOs in this country, but a lot of them are just looking for what to eat. But someone here, you will start one that will truly be a blessing, and God will also bless you, you know, for reaching out to the less privileged in the name of Jesus. God will bless you for reaching out to the people who are hurting in the name of Jesus. Second Kings chapter 4, I read from verse 1 to 7. 
It's an encounter that a widow woman had with a prophet, a prophet Elisha. Second Kings chapter 4, I read from verse 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell and pay, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. The Lord bless the reading of his word. It's important to realize that a foundational thought for enterprise development is that money flows in the direction of value. Every human being is a living magnet. We don't attract what we want essentially. We attract who we are. And God has so wired us in a way that we can take the capacity of our magnet uh, to a new level from time to time. So today, the best that you may have experienced may be that you are able to run a business uh, with a turnover of um, maybe a million naira per annum. The best that you may have experienced is that you are engaged on a job and they're able to pay you maybe a million naira total payment, total package for the entire year. But the truth is that the way God wired us is in such a way that you can take your capacity to attract resources to a new level from time to time, whether you are engaged in a business or you, you are on a career path. You, you, some people put pressure on their employers to pay them more. They agitate. They set up pressure groups. But the truth is that you are a magnet. If only you do something to your magnet, you can fire your boss. Because somebody else will be willing to pay more. Am I saying the truth today? The truth also for business people is that you can develop capacity uh, to do much more that you, than you are doing right now. Most people believe that there's this thing about being a jack of all trade and master of none. Um, stick to one thing, become a an expert in it and all of that. And just talking to you for five minutes, you've reeled out, you know, a series of businesses or business ideas that you have come up with. How do you how do you manage, how do you reconcile those two those two status? You know, how do you just make sure that as you're doing different things, you're not you don't you're not you don't get lost in the midst of them and that you're able to focus on one thing. One of the things that we forget is that there's a time for everything. What people always look at, you look at successful people and you see that they have multiple businesses, but you never ask themselves what did they do when they started, right? Typically, what successful people do is you build, you transition, you put processes in place to manage, and then you go into something else. So they're always very focused people. So when you look at them down the road, you see them do many, they are doing many things, and you get confused and say, okay, I'm about to start, I need to jump in into five things, 
a lot because I see young people and you know they, I'm hustling. Uh, I'm doing MCS here. I'm doing tailoring there. I'm doing this one there. I'm doing this one there. Then they lose focus and everything does not work in all the direction because all of a sudden you're a young person. You don't have the capabilities and you want to be chairman group of companies. You don't even have the finances to anything. So you end up being chairman group of nothing, right? So what people need to always do is step back and ask yourself, I want to be like this successful person, but what did he do five years ago when he started? What did he do two years ago when he started? Because that is what is more important and applicable to you, not what he's doing now, because he's playing a different game at the present time. The prophet asked the lady, what do you have? That question, uh, what do you want me to do for you? That question was supposed to provoke her to recognize the fact that she has needs. You know, she came to the prophet and she told the prophet a story. So for the prophet to be asking her again, what do you want me to do? Prophet, prophet was supposed to say, let me call on the God of heaven. And let, let him supply money supernaturally. So that you wake up tomorrow morning and you just meet money on your bed. Is that not what most people will want the prophet to do? <laughs> Are we still together today? Yeah, that's what most people will want the prophet to do. Let me just call on the God of heaven. And let the God of heaven open the roof of your room. And as the Lord lives, as my soul lives, when you get into your room, you will see $100 bills just filling everywhere. You know the truth? Many people in Nigeria will love that kind of a church. <laughs> but the prophet looked at her and said, what do you want me to do for you? That statement was to provoke her to recognize a need. Ladies and gentlemen, when you recognize your own needs, it's become easier for you to recognize needs in the life of other people. And until you see needs, God will not start to open your eyes to see how you can meet them and meet them profitably. Money flows in the direction of value. So recognize the concept of value as anything that meets a particular need in, another, in anyone's life. And I want you to know today that your own needs are the place to start. You have need for food, need for security, need for communication, need for shelter, need for to be beautiful, you know, need for adventure, need for respect and, you know, whatever. Uh, so if these needs, I mean, when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it goes from the mundane, you know, uh, or let me say the, the necessary needs uh, to the level where you're just, you, you're just aspiring. So that's what, those are the people that they target with luxury items. Because it's not, the, food is no longer your problem. But you want respect and prestige. So you want to wear designers. Your stomach is already full. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so these needs go from levels to levels. But we need to recognize that you only get an exchange when you meet a need. So I need to recognize my own needs. I need to recognize the needs in other people's life. What are people complaining about around you? Uh, two of our staff came into the office late this past week. And um, they were supposed to resume at 9. They resumed at past 10. And uh, Pastor T, you know, asked them, ah, why are you coming in late? They said, we've been on the road for two hours. Uh, um, one of them lived around the Koei there and said, just from the Koei here, I stayed on the road. No buses, no taxis. No, I mean, uh, people were not coming, I mean, you know, and all, and as in the drivers were not coming. You know, and when I heard, I was just passing by her, and I said, look, uh, maybe God wants you to start a transport company. Because that's where it starts from. Because the need is a genuine need. What are people complaining about around you? Somebody's complaining about the kid not well taken care of. Somebody's complaining about the school. Somebody's complaining about uh, somebody who made a dress for them and wasn't sitting properly. What are the current gaps between expectation and reality in products and service delivery around you? When you see those gaps, they are the things that open your mind to the needs that are around you. 
You open your mind to the needs around you. And let me not lie to you this morning. I need you to hear the truth and hear it well. If you want to build enduring wealth, if you want to truly become a money magnet, you must be a person that is value-driven. And you cannot be value-driven until you can recognize needs. You cannot be value-driven until you can recognize needs. The prophet asked the woman, what do you want me to do? Tell me about your needs. Because in saying it, you will recognize that there's a place that value can flow through. And you can also know that other people have the same needs that you have. Other people have the same needs that you have. We have young people here. Some, some people are undergraduates now in the university. When I was in the university, uh, some of us lived anyhow in the sense that we had people sending us money from home. So our minds were shut down as far as enterprise development was concerned. You see somebody selling um, gari or selling sugar in the student uh, apartment and um, you laugh at them. You call them names. But they collect your money. Yeah, because very soon, you need Grand North. You go, you knock their door. Grand North, 50 Naira. They collect. They made maybe 20 Naira from that or 10 Naira. And I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I teach and preach in the universities today, I, I tell them that if I have the option of coming back here, I will, after my first semester, not just to kill myself, after my first semester, I'll tell them not to send me money from home again. Maybe if I get hungry, my brain will open. Because I believe, <laughs> for some people, if you have started some entrepreneurial, you know, things, since those days, you may not be at the level that you are today. Some of the skills are just picking up now, you have picked up since that time. Is somebody still with me this morning? Can you hear me tap your neighbor say, people are, uh, uh, there are needy people around you. There are people who need help around you. God wants you to meet their needs. Say, as you meet those needs, they will pay you money. We have no doubt you were blessed by this broadcast. If you do not know the saving grace and love of God, this is your opportunity to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. To receive him, repeat the simple prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe you are my Lord and Savior and you died for my sin. I repent of my sins, cleanse me and make me a new creature in you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you said this prayer, you have become a new creature in Christ. Join a Bible-believing church in your neighborhood and start your exciting, rewarding walk of faith. God bless you. We often hear of commentaries of people who live under a dollar a day. What that means is that you have people who don't have a roof over their head, people who can afford to feed themselves three times a day, people who lack the basic economic opportunities. And what we do in Elevate 200 is to reach out to these people. Like Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 6 verse 38 to verse 40 where he saw a multitude of people who were hungry he commanded his disciples to sit them down in groups of fifties and hundreds in the same way by revelation the elevate 200 ministry has decided to sit our members into groups of twenties each group will be pastored by one person assisted by another such that we can mentor these people individually each person will be mentored each person will be pastored each person will be monitored and measured there will be a documentary on every single life that has gathered into the elevate 200 ministry uh, we can meet their needs better we can relate with them we can encourage them and we can also recommend them when the time comes for recommendation
Ahmed John. And I from Oyo State, precisely Badan. Initially, when I came to Lagos, I was staying at Kurama. But as time goes on, I, I left there, came to the city, I was living in the city. Then, by the grace of God, I was opportune to go back to school. I started then from JSS1 and I finished this year. I did the YF and the jump. But fortunate for me, I've not been having the fun to move on. Then I decided to just come to TBS and one of the Sunday I came to the church here and when I met Pastor Tunde I told him about my story and where I was living before that I would need some cash to go to Ibadan to present the admission and with the help of God he gave me the money and within two weeks and three weeks I came back with the admission letter and I told him that everything has been done. Elevate 200 is a vision straight from the heart of God and our goal is to reach out to at least 200 of these kind of people to empower them spiritually and economically and that's what we have been doing. My church is a place where I meet God and He meets me. My church is a place of healing, grace and relationship. My church is beautiful. It is a place where there is mercy for me. My church is full of grace. My church is a place to grow spiritually and receive testimonies from God. It's a place where my kids have a great time learning and I know they are growing in the knowledge of God. Join pastors Godman and Bola Akinlabi along with the family of real people on Wednesday 6.30 p.m. and Sundays first service starts 8 a.m. and second service 10 a.m. All at the Priestess Center, 3 Remy Oluwode Street and New Lekki Second Roundabout on Niru Lagos. Elevation Church.